January 8, 1993, and it's approximately 2 p.m. Paul Benassi is uh, going to talk to me on tape for the next several hours, I presume. Paul, would you step in here and take your place? Paul, uh, you're doing this on a voluntary basis. Yeah. Okay. And um, no threats or promises were made to you? No. To get to, to have you talk and to discuss this matter with me? No. Before we begin, tell me when you were born. August 3rd, 1967. Your number? 509. And explain to me what multiple personality is. Because uh, you've been a multiple in yourself. Yeah, multiple personality disorder is a disorder that uh, people get when they've suffered traumatic events, usually when they were young children, usually stemming from sexual abuse or satanic ritual abuse. And uh, it's when person has two or more uh, personalities living within a body and stuff, or usually it's more than that. And it's, they each have their own lives and they each, uh, sometimes they see each other as being, usually they see each other as being a, a totally different person. But I, uh, some of them know that there are multiples or that there's other personalities within the same body. But the majority of the personalities do not, and the main personality usually has no awareness of uh, the other personalities at all. Usually he's totally unaware of everything. He just has to live through life with everybody saying, why did you do this yesterday, and you didn't even remember yesterday. How, how do you switch from one personality to another? Now, you were multiple personality, right? Yeah. How many personalities did you have? Oh, altogether there were about 120 121 or so. Did each personality have a name? Every personality has a name. Some uh, personalities didn't have names, but they weren't personalities that were very active. Some of them held just a very few minutes of time all together, and it was just to hold a certain event or a certain traumatic episode in life. And why, does, why do people develop these? You said because of traumatic experience, but why would a traumatic experience cause you to develop another personality? I haven't figured that out myself, but I think it has something to do with the fact that the main personality is unable to cope with it. It's so traumatic that you have to create a system so that the main personality can go on living without having all the problems because normal people who get abused and stuff that don't create multiples and stuff usually have a lot of emotional problems, have a lot of uh, physical problems and stuff, whereas a multiple usually the main personality can usually go through life pretty simply and nobody really notices it until uh, the person starts getting older or switching behavior is so evident that there's not just one person there that it's like you're dealing with several different people because they just change. Does a person who's multiple remain multiple all their lives? No. The multiple can become integrated. Uh, a lot of multiples, I think, go for co-consciousness, co -consciousness, which is more like living with the other personalities, but everybody aware of what's going on all the time. But integration means that the personalities are totally gone, that you don't switch off from one personality to another personality, that one personality, usually the, you know, hopefully it's the main person, all the other personalities integrate with them, and all their memories from all the other personalities go into that one person's memory, and the person learns to live with all of the traumatic events, and, uh, learns to live in life and stuff without having to switch off to deal with daily events. Are you multiple personality today? Well, they say that I'll be a multiple all of my life and have the ability to be a multiple and stuff, but I have no other personality, so no, I'm not. Who says that you will be a multiple all your life? Well, that's what all the psychiatrists try and say, is that once you're a multiple personality, you, you can uh, integrate completely and stuff, but you always have the ability to dissociate into and, and create a new, new personality in the time that's needed, which uh, I don't know if that's true or not because there's nothing that, after remembering my past, that anything in the future that could be any more, any more horrible or any worse than what I've already gone through, so I don't feel like there's any need to ever have to switch back into that kind of a mode.
Uh, are you saying that you're integrated now? Yeah. How did you become integrated? Uh, that's mainly through the work with uh, Pastor John and dealing with going through each of the personalities, finding out what caused the personality, and completely going through the personality, talking to it. In my own, usually it was in my room and stuff, and convincing his personality stuff that he can live better if he's living with the rest of us. And uh, in, in the integration process and stuff, the personality usually I can see it inside my head, because inside you have a visual of everybody, it's the other personalities and stuff. And they grow up and they kind of just merge with you. And all of their memories come with them and stuff. There's no longer any need to have that personality because you already know everything that the personality knows from talking with them. So when, when we talk in, in the next couple of days, um, um, as you remember things that happened in the past, is this going to be your integrated personality? How do I know that you're not going to go back into one of your other personalities and forget something? Because there's no other personalities to come out or talk to. There's no, no other personalities you can, you know, I can step into. And uh, if I forget something, it's mainly because uh, I just don't remember it at the time or something. Sometimes somebody will say something and I'll remember it later. Because after integrating with other personalities, I have all the information they have. Whereas before, the personalities could just come out and tell you like that. Now I have to think about like a normal person, which is a little bit longer, but I still have a little bit better than other people because I know how to, I filed all the memory and stuff. And I can just kind of switch into that type of a, this is like a file in my head and stuff. I can just kind of switch back and stuff and try and go into that activity of that event and pick out what it is that I'm looking for. Now, you said that uh, Reverend Morrow worked with you on your different personalities. Did you go one by one and identify each personality and then discuss that personality with him in order to become integrated? Mm -hmm. Some of the personalities, the ones that were more what I call uh, uh, the uh, living altars, which is the ones I call them living altars because they were the ones that were living daily lives. I mean, they would like get up in the morning, one would, you know, go to school or whatever it was. They're the ones that ran the day. And most of my life, I was out between like two and four o'clock in the afternoon. That was my normal time for me as Paul to be out. And uh, so it's like they were, you know, we had to go through each one of them and talk to them. A lot of times they came out and talked to them, even though I don't think Pastor John knew a lot of times he talked to some of the other personalities. Sometimes I know he did. But yeah, I had to go through each one of them and discuss what created them in the first place. And uh, main thing was is I had to let them know that I cared about them and that uh, I didn't hold any anger, you know, toward them or anything for anything that they had done. And uh, cause a lot of them thought that, that I'd be angry with them when they found out everything that was going on and stuff. And so I had to deal with that. And uh, main thing was is I think the ability that I wanted to be integrated because I. <laughs> didn't want to go on living a life when I didn't even know what was going on. It's like everything kept switching on me. It's like people would tell me something to do one day and a week later I was ready to go do it and they're like going, well, who told you to do that last week? And I was like, you know, I don't remember. You know, it's like that was just this morning, wasn't it? No, it's last week. I was like, okay, you know. I thought they were going crazy or something when actually with me that was not really crazy but just switching because it's not psychotic. I'm not, I wasn't psychotic. I didn't you know, it's not like I went out and did things that, you know, like an abnormal person would do. So, um, uh, you feel that uh, now, as an integrated person, you have full knowledge of all that occurred with all your personalities, and you can act as one individual. Yeah. Paul Benassi. Yeah. And without any difficulty. So, as I ask you questions in the next several days, and we're going to be together for several days, and as you answer these questions, this is Paul Benassi answering them. But it, in the old t old times, it would have been one of your other personalities. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, in the past, it would have had to been some of the others because, uh, like, when I first started getting interviewed by uh, Derek Caradori and the, the Omaha police, the other personalities had to come out because I had no knowledge of any of the any of this stuff at all. I mean, like, the police when they said that I. 
Pavanasi uh, you know, said that nothing happened, they were probably correct because they probably actually got, in fact, I know they got me out one time and stuff, when, after one of the first times I talked to him and stuff, and then... What do you mean they got you out? They got me as Paul out. Okay. During the middle of one of their interviews about some of these people that had abused me and stuff, and uh, the way they got me out and stuff was they kind of scared the other personalities, and I'm usually the one that's kind of the protector of everybody. Mm -hmm. Cause I, you know, even though I didn't know at the time that I was these were other personalities, I thought these were their other friends and stuff that I was protecting and stuff. I came out and the cops were sitting there saying, you know, telling me to take back stuff. You know, this didn't really happen, did it? I mean, that's the way they interviewed you. Yeah, that's the way they interviewed me. It's like when well, I was who interviewed about you that way? Detective uh, or Sergeant Hope. With Detective the, Hope. With what department? OPD. I'm all public. Have you ever have you ever been interviewed by the FBI? No. Never. I've never met anybody from the FBI. Never met him or you never interviewed by them? I never met him. Never even seen an FBI agent. Okay. Was, um, okay, go ahead. Finish explaining. But, uh, it's like with, you know, when they got me to recant or take stuff back and with the police and stuff, all they'd have to do is apply a little pressure and stuff, which they knew I was an MPD at the time they were interviewing me. And the first thing they should have known that with an MPD, you do not apply pressure because that just causes another personality to come up. That, well, basically, you pressure all the personalities enough, and you'll finally get a personality that will admit that they either lied or don't. That either a personality that doesn't know anything about it and will say, "Yeah, I, you know." So basically, they were with a multiple. They were in good hands because it's like they all you have to do is apply a little pressure, and you got a uh, perfect recanter because. He's, uh, you know, already the traumatic events and painful events or even uh, anything that even begins to be abusive, the other personalities just flee, they run. If they can't handle it, they run. And uh, so that's why they... Did anybody else work with you besides Reverend Morrow? Uh... In, in your, uh, integrating your personalities? No. Sounds to me like you did a great job. Uh... Well, he did, and well, God did a lot of the work. I mean, because I had to go back to my cell. Most of the integration happened when I was in my on my own and stuff, and I'd go through them and talk to the personalities, and they'd be ready to integrate, and they'd integrate, and it was fine. And so you to strengthen your own strength and your own faith. Well, it wasn't my faith. It was the faith that God gave me, because my own my own strength, I'd have I'd have quit. He gave me a strength that I made it with. I'm going to show you some pictures right now, and uh, I don't have any group pictures to show with you, but I, I, these are, this is a picture of a man and a child, and I'll hold these up one at a time to the camera, right there. There's that one, and this one. And I want you to tell me if you recognize that person, that man. I see the same guy, right? Yeah, same one. I say this one's harder to spell. Looks real familiar, but think, think about it in your travels, where you might have run into him. Sure right now. But do you think you've seen him before? Yeah. First of all, he reminded me again of Jerry Lowell from California, but that wasn't where I remember this guy from. And I was trying to remember what, what Jerry Lowell Jerry Lowell was similar to that, but 
not quite that big. Mm -hmm. Never was. I don't think Jerry Lowe would be around uh, any women or anything like that. Who's Jerry Lowe? He's a. All I remember is that he worked for some government office out in California. And uh, he did some work for Alan Bear with some of his houses and stuff out there. Um, was he a government agent? No, he was. Uh, I don't remember what he did. He, said, he used to be like a runner. He used to run information back and forth. I'm going to show you some artist conceptions, and I want you to tell me if you've seen these people. I'm out of He's up for the camera. This one. And here's another one. Now I'm gonna cover the writing on these. I just I'm just gonna I just want you to look at the pictures. I mean the conceptions on there, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you won't have any I don't want to prejudice your mind in any way whatsoever. And uh, this is what, let me put another piece of paper up here. This is what Mr. Benassi will be looking at right here only on this piece of paper. That's the picture of the top. And then this is the only thing he'll be looking at on this one. Anybody that you've ever seen before? Look familiar at all? I've seen a lot of people look like that, but nothing that I can realize. Nothing you can recognize? No. Okay. Now let's look. We're going to do something here. You through with those? Yeah. Okay. Now let's look at something else here. Pull this up for the camera. This is another picture I'm going to show him. This is all that he'll see. He won't see any writing there. Take your time. Same person as this. For this doesn't have a beard and mustache. Hmm? Doesn't have a beard and mustache. See him. I don't know, West Coast. For the benefit of uh, people who are watching this video, this picture that I just showed you, the last picture, is the same person as the individual in these two pictures. The man in these two pictures. See him on the West Coast. I'm not sure if it was California or Nevada, though. So you know, it was out during a couple of trips that we took out there. And out there? To Nevada and California. Okay, do you want to think about that instead of us continuing? Yeah. 
think about it. Let's think about it, and uh, we'll come back to it, okay? Okay. Now, the next series of questions I was going to ask you had to deal with this man that you think you've seen before, but rather than continue, um, I will not ask any more questions about that case, but I will. I do want to show you this picture, and I'm going to show this to the camera. And see if you remember this individual. Or if you know him. You don't know him? Nothing. Okay. There's not one you need to think about even. You've never seen that man before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go back to. Uh, we're going to come back to this. I'm going to give you time to think about it and come back to it. Okay, okay. later on. If we don't do it today, we'll do it tomorrow or the next day. But think about that in the meantime. If you want to look at his picture uh, between now and then, some more, um, I'll let you just take these two pictures and take them. I, won't, I don't want to give you the other because it has writing on it, and I don't want to make it appear that I'm giving you information, leading information. Yeah. The newspaper article. Take that and think about it. Uh, going back to uh, multiple personality, uh, are, I've been told that there's trigger words that can be used on MPDs. Can you tell me about that? Well, they used to have a lot of trigger words. Uh, I could get some of that in there. You have it there? Pull it out. Let's discuss it right now while we're talking about it. But, No, that's not it. I know that's not it. It's at the bottom. <laughs> it always is, isn't it? <laughs> not quite at the bottom. Close enough. Okay, that's it. I'm going to read it, so... But, uh, this is the list on me. Cross A, B, C, D, E, and F alters. What is that now? It's something I made on myself about the different personalities. It explains what class they were in. These are like the ones I was talking about, the living personalities are class A alters. And, uh, uh, like, there's different groups, personality and stuff, and there's certain ways to get to each group. Yeah, it's a thing to get But, uh, like in order to get certain personalities, you'd have to say a code. That's usually In order to group. get a certain personality? For these people, we're, we're talking about these people, who are we talking about? Somebody that would say trigger you. <clears throat> people from the FBI, people from the CIA, uh, the controllers. Of the but you said you've never seen the FBI agent before. Well, I've seen them, but I'm talk when I said I didn't hadn't seen them, I mean, none have come to interview me. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, I've met lots of FBI agents, but I just have never had any ever come interview you. me. Okay. That's what I meant by that. I didn't mean that I've never met me. Yeah, okay. I've met a lot of them. But, uh, it's like with most personalities under, I could use Dustin. Dustin. That is, okay. And Zach Ryan and Br Bradley, which are all military type uh, of personalities. Okay, I'm going to hold this up. Okay, you got it there? Yeah, I got a better one in here. Okay, let's, let's get your best one. Right? But, uh, uh, okay, just hold that up and explain but, uh, it. It's like this. Okay, in the top it says Paul Benassi, and it says Dustin here, and it says Zach, Ryan, and Bradley, is it? Yeah, Bradley. Those were the ones that were in control of uh, the ones that were under him, which was Carl. It's pretty much like a military uh, operation. You got the leaders, and then you got the, the you got your company commander, your plat platoon sergeant. Your platoon. This is all wrapped up in you, one person, you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's not leave this. Let's, let's, oh, let's explain I'll put, this further. Put it over here. 
Yeah. But uh, well, now the purpose for it is that one each personality that was created for their for them, each one was just taught a little bit of you know how to do something because you didn't want one personality to know too much. Like one knows how to like maybe uh, develop film, you know, for spying stuff. One might know how to develop color film, which they did, but one might know how to fly an airplane. One might, might know how to fly a helicopter, but none of them ever learned more than one operation. You're talking about each personality. Yeah. Each personality, that made them separate, so that like if they ever got captured, if they were spying or something, the personality that would usually get captured would be one of these lo lower ones here and stuff that wouldn't know anything. All they'd know is basically their name, you know, if they were in the military, their name, rank, and serial number, which in my case, all they'd know is their name, uh, date of birth, and home telephone number or something. And I don't even know my home okay, telephone Okay, let me explain this. At the top it says Paul Benassi. What's this W off to the side, uh, pointing uh, down to Dustin? That uh, means that, well, I'll get a bigger chart that shows it somewhere. Let's see. Dustin's chart was right over here somewhere. It has to be over here somewhere. It's usually shared with another personality. You have to go through. Like to get to Dustin, which Dustin is right here. In order to get to Dustin's group, you have to go through me. You have to go through this group here and this group here. So I get to go through all the personalities just to get to his group. His group is so far down. Right. So okay, far so this is the big chart here, right? Yeah. It's got This is the big it's chart. Got all the personalities, but it has now, the, this has got all your personalities on it? No, it just has the main The main personalities. All the circles mean that there's groups okay. inside of each one of them. Once you get up on the other side of the camera and take us through this chart while I'm holding it up for the camera. Okay. First of all, go look at the camera and see if, if, I'm, if I'm getting the whole page. Yeah, I could uh, always take it off and bring it up there. Okay. What, what, what do you got there? I mean, no. I got a... You got the whole page? Yeah, I got the whole page. Let me zoom in real Two quick. Two pages? Yeah, I got both pages. Okay, come on up here and explain it. Then. I'll hold it. Hang on, let me get this. I can see Paul Benassi. Okay. Mm Okay, now I can come up here and explain it. Okay, why don't you stand over here? It's a bit easier, I think. You'd okay. See, you see it easier. This is uh. We'll go through step by step. Starting with Paul Benassi here and Paul Benassi. Why is Paul Benassi on this page and why is he on this page? Well, these are actually two charts I made. Each one of them represents. This guy's Christian Benassi over here. He's one of the main controllers. He's also over here. He's in control of 33 personalities. Zacharias Knight's in control of 21 lower personalities. Uh, Mark's in control of 21. And it took Christian and Zach, and they came together and they agreed and they made Christian. They made another personality that the two of them had to agree on to let him out. Whereas before, like Christian, anyone that was under him, he could agree on himself to let any one of them out. But on these ones, they were like trying to create, or both of them had to do it. And then on Mark Anderson and Zach created Dane. So both of them had to agree when they let him out and to let his personalities out. No, I was no, no, I've heard Kristen has eight and Dane has seven, seven personalities, personalities seven. under him. Yeah, under them. And uh, it's like on, under Todd here, Todd was directly, he was split from a different thing. He came off the main core line from me, just like Christian actually did. Mm -hmm. And I put them down lower since they, these three are together. But Todd has ten personalities under him and Micah has eighteen under him. But over here, when we get to this group, What's I w? was separated. The W means that you have to go through one of these. Oh, you have to go through one of these personalities to get the yeah, W? Yeah, I got to Let's see. I think I got one in here. But, uh, <coughs> maybe I don't have one in here, but, you know, I thought I had a chart that said what the W stood for because it's kind of hard to remember everything. You know, and I know what it means. That's why it's got the block there. Mm -hmm. That means I can't go. Oh, that's Wesley. He's the only way that you can get to these guys. Okay. Wesley is a personality that I never knew about until just before I got out of prison. He would be the one that would decipher information. When people would go to get information to me and stuff, 
If it was something he didn't want me to have, he would block them. He'd get in front of them. It's like when I was in my building, I had a building inside my head, which I seen. I could walk through the halls and stuff. And uh, there was an office that I never knew what was in there. It was Wesley's office before my door. There was Wesley's room, my room, and there was like an invisible shell. Whenever one of the person I was trying to give him inf me information that he didn't want him to have, he was like the all-seeing eye. He was like, oh, he knew everything that was going on with every personality. And he'd stop them right before they could leave. They couldn't get to my place because he'd have that invisible filled up and they'd run into it. When you're in prison. And they'd have to go in there. Well, no, it was any time. Okay. In the past. But when I was trying to get information inside there, he was the one that blocked everything or twisted stuff up. They'd have to go in there and check with him. Then they'd have to come out and go to me and stuff. And sometimes he'd take the information and he'd twist it all around. And the personality would try and tell me stuff and there'd be a block. He was like a wall that blocked stuff. And uh, there was no way to go to these personalities without going through him directly. That's why it's brought the broken mind and means indirectly. I had to go through him even though I didn't know it. But I could go to these ones down here without that because I'd go straight to him. These guys I could go straight to. These ones were a little bit more difficult because I had to go through these and him. But I could go directly to him if I needed to. But these ones down here I had to go through him first. Okay, this is Dustin and, uh, here. Dustin was like in control of military, all of the military personalities. He was in control of all of them. And these are all military personalities? Down all here? these ones over in here. These ones over here dealt with uh, Satanism and... Okay, let's stay on the military and they come across. We've got Alex, Zach, Sean, Ryan, Brent, Bradley, and Carl. Yeah. Carl's got 21, bradley got 6. These Each others just have circles. They don't have any... They team. have personalities under them, but those are all on their list that I have. But they're on another list, huh? Yeah, I okay. didn't figure it out so, because they so had somebody it, that I just... In order to, in order, if someone had to deal with your military background, they would have to go through... Well, in the past, they would have had to go through Wesley. Wesley to and Dustin, to Dustin, and Dustin. And then Dustin would have to let him in there, a combination yeah. of both of them. In order to get any of the information that they'd all know, you'd have to get Wesley and Dustin together because Dustin takes orders only from Wesley, mm -hmm. which means that he can't tell you anything unless he's got orders from above. To tell you anything. These guys down here can't tell you anything unless Dustin says it's okay. And anybody in his group has to go through Carl. Carl has to go through Bradley. Bradley has to go through these two and these two. You know, it's like it's so like the military. Right. Whenever it's like passing the buck upward. Yeah. Everything and then this down. is your satanic information, right? That's the ones that dealt with satanic stuff. This one dealt with. Kelly had like 50 some personalities that all dealt with being locked up in different situations, like in prison, being stuck in a box, being you know tied up and stuck somewhere. He dealt with all the Kind of. There's yeah. Wesley here again, though. Wesley there used to be called confusion, and this used to be death. Life. He dealt with all the death. Life. He, he says changed life. his name. He changed his name after. From death to life. Yeah. When they when they stood before the underground stuff, they didn't want anything to do with the Satanists anymore, so they all changed their name, and he changed his name to Wesley. Uh, I don't know why, but. But the topic here for the Satanists. And his name is West Lee, not Wesley. It's okay, Wesley. West Lee. Yeah. And this is Paul J. Bonacci, and then we have Wesley, not West Lee. Yeah. And life, which is actually death. And Kelly. Paul Jr. used to be, uh, oh, I forgot what his name was. Even. He changed it, though, because he didn't like. Because mm -hmm. his name was, his, he had a satanic name, actually. Military satanic, what's this? They dealt with kind of, I'm not sure. I mean, I've tried to deal with their personality, their, their memories and stuff, and they really weren't really bad. They were mainly dealing with in-between stuff. I mean, it was like nothing that was too abusive and stuff, but they just kind of came out. They had bits and pieces of information to give, but mainly they just, they were like, well, actually, these two here all had computers. They were like the computer personalities. They stored all the information. They made everything on like microfilm and stuff inside my head. They made it so that when people asked me details and stuff, they knew exactly what was going on and what, you know, why when I took trips to places and stuff, I could tell them, you know, every town we went through on the way to Colorado or something. And that was because we used to play a game and we used to do the alphabet. And you and Mike didn't, you know, picked it up, but they're the ones that stored you Mike They Mike. stored all the signs inside. Mike is who? He was like, no, he ain't another personality. He's a he was another kid that was with us. Oh, another family. kid? Okay. All right. what, what is, what's this group here? They dealt with almost all the... They dealt with a little, like, Dungeons and Dragons, but they were all sexual, sexually abused personalities and stuff. So they were the ones that were first created, and they were purposely created. Uh, they weren't 
natural. These ones were created by the uh, same group of military that used a lot of the Satanism and the military personalities because the Satanism caused a lot of personalities. They could use it like sacrifice and stuff because it would cause, you know, altars and stuff. They would use, sometimes they'd even have fake sacrifices. They'd, you know, make you think that they killed somebody. They'd even take the, you know, take a body or something, but they, they'd let the kids see exactly where they buried the things that, or the people at that they're supposed to kill and stuff. And even if they do kill a person, they'll bury the kid, they'll bury the person right in front of the kids. And when the kids leave, they dig the body up and they, usually they'll uh, incinerate it or cremate it. And uh, the kid, you know, if he ever goes forward and says, well, I know where the bodies are at, they're, he's going to take them exactly where the body was at. They're going to dig around and not find anything, and they're going to say, well, the kid's incredible because, you know, he doesn't know anything. Right. That's just to do that. Well, what are these over here? These are, that's actually a chart just of Christian, but that's this guy's personalities. Those are the 33 personalities. Oh, well, so this, yeah, this chart just fits under this one then. Yeah, that's but that's mainly because these, the very reason I got these ones out is this one's right here had the personalities that were running my life. Mostly, I mean, they go with the uh, class, like I was saying, class A altars. The majority of the class A altars, there's like uh, 20 class A altars, and almost every one of them is on that list there. That means that all these personalities were the ones that were running my day to day life. They're the ones but that were actually over here. Life. On the big chart, they're over here. Yeah, they're over here, but you know, this guy here, he had the most of them. I mean, he had Mikey, which is on there. Alexander, 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 Mike Benassi, Michael Benassi, Drew, Nicholas, Joshua. Top nine are all on him, under him. Mm -hmm. They were running your day to day life. They were running because they're, they're the ones that had most of the activity. Even a lot of the activity that took place, they knew about. So this chart here is the master chart. Yeah, that's the master chart. That's the master chart. Okay. And I can uh -huh. see. Now let's go. Let's go. Uh, and you show me Christopher's, which is 33 Christian. Person, uh, Christian. You get that one out. Let's run by that one again. Okay, That's right here. That's right there. Okay. Now you show me Christians, and and these here are the personalities that fall under this one category yeah. right there. Okay. Let's now let's let's go through one at a time and throw them on the chart. Okay. This is Zacharias, the next guy. Which is right here. Right here in the middle. Okay. And he had. Uh, I think it says 21 personalities on there. He has 21 personalities. Are there 21 names on here? Yeah. 21 names on there. Okay, so this this is off the master chart is right there. Okay, continue. Then, uh, yeah, Mark Anderson, who was created because of Harold Anderson. Okay, uh, where's Mark Anderson? He's right here. Mark Anderson's right here, and this is falls under that category. Now you said something just now that's kind of interesting. Yeah, he was he created because of Harold Anderson. He, his last name came because of Harold Anderson. He was created before he got abused by Harold Anderson, but. He never had a last name, so he picked up the name Anderson because, I don't know why, but then because he was the one, the main one that dealt with Harold Anderson. Okay. Tell me about your relationship with Harold Anderson. Well, I was involved with him about six times, or not six times, about ten times uh, sexually, and he was kind of sadistic, like to tie people up and bomb them with cigarettes. And, uh, stuff like that. Did he tie you up and burn you with cigarettes? Yeah, I mean some other kids. How old were you at the time? Uh, I started in about 70, about 78. I think it was close to 78. It was in 1978. And uh, so I've been about 11. So. Okay, let's continue with uh, some of these other characters. Okay, and then we got uh, Christian. This guy down here. K R I S. How do you go through these two? Zach and Christian. Okay, here's Christian right there. Yeah, and he's got eight personalities under him, and most of his were all still little kids. All right. When here. I got arrested. This is right here. Okay. It was one of the personalities in his group that was partially responsible for me going to prison. What happened in 1985? What? what why was that? Well, one of the personalities that was oh, I see. out was like six years old, and it was with a cousin of mine that was talking about some stuff, and 
touched him, and then one of the other personalities came out, Christian came out with a punch telephone pole and stuff, because he, he knew that that was wrong and stuff. And uh, that's now 17, and they said it happened in 87, so they could charge him with it. Yeah, okay, let's go to another one then. And this is Dane. Uh, a lot of his personalities. Uh, this is uh, what now? Which one? Where is he on this chart? Dane's right there. Oh, Dane. This is Dane. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't say Dane. It says Paul and Chris, Zach Rice and Mark Owens created. Oh, here's Dane right there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. you get to him. You have to go through him. These two. I had to go through these two and. and to get to Dane, and, and there's Dane down here with seven personalities. Yeah. Most of his had the name Daniels or uh, Knight. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, next. We got Micah. Micah is over here. Micah is uh, number, has 18 personalities? Yeah. They were kind of ones that kind of, I don't know what you'd say. They weren't really, I don't know if they were really computers or not. They were just kind of, they seemed to be able to put stuff together easier. I mean, you got Alan Bear's last name on here. Why Bear's last name on here? Well, that's how they were created because of him. They were created an experience to store, you had with Bear. They were created to store information about him and stuff like that. Yeah, in other words, an experience you have with Bear, or a series of, ex of experiences. Yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, Todd. He's next to Micah. Okay, he's right here. Everything's pretty much in order. So. Good. Okay. Uh, now tell me about Todd. He had 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You're right. You're right on target. Yeah. Uh, but most of his. They, a lot of them have the person that abused them's last name, like Wise, William, and Desert Benassi, Gall. Okay. Anybody who had a different name than Michaels or uh -huh. Benassi or something like that, I put the name down. I can have a copy of all these. Yeah. Okay, keep going. And, uh, let's see. Next We're moving one. over this way. Uh, let's pull Dustin's out. I've got him on the board. Justin, Shayanta. Okay, this is getting into uh, Paul Jr.'s personalities. He has 36 personalities. Okay, where are we? And Paul Jr. is. Right yeah, Paul Jr. is right here on the chart, and that had to do with your satanic activity. Yeah, he has six groups of six. Each group has exactly six in it. Six okay, groups. would you explain that? Uh, There's six groups with six people in it. Okay. Each group is a different age. All these ones are under like baby personalities. They were created during the times that either uh, infants were sacrificed or was like an Alec. Alec was created because there was a kid that was sacrificed who was named Alec, and they prayed a spirit into me, and it became. They what? Prayed the prayed spirit, a spirit into. Spirit into me. Okay. I was only about three years old at the time, mm -hmm. and that's how I got that personality, Alec. And these ones are all like that. Uh, I want to stop. File. I have a file on all of these. I'll give you. Well, each one of those. It tells you what each each group stood for. But this is like the oldest group and stuff they dealt with. Like some of them were okay, like. Okay, what This is this is when you were three years the old. Infants. These ones are like five, up to about five years old. And these okay. ones are like from above. But each group also dealt with just one type of activity. Like uh, I think they dealt with like magicians and stuff. They were like the. Okay, let's keep going. What was this group? Magical power. So I'm I'm trying to remember what that group was. And there was eight, one group. Eight, this one. one here dealt with like human, like uh, not really human sacrifice. They dealt with like the knights of the round table and stuff like that. I mean, they had their own castle. They had their own running their own show and stuff. These were that. adults. These were the oldest ones. Yeah, they weren't really adults. They're like six up to sixteen, I think. What's this one? Damien and Anania. They dealt with. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. I have a list somewhere, but I forgot where I put it at. On what they dealt with. Uh, they split. Not exactly it, but they dealt mainly with a certain thing. I mean, like some dealt with the babies who were sacrificed. Some dealt with uh, these ones were abusive to other kids. They were forced to beat up on other kids and stuff like that. This group here. Yeah. That's five, six years old. You know, they, were, they were like the brats. They were like created okay. to. You don't remember this group? Shanta, I think they were created for having 
I think it was either this group or this group that was created to have sex with other kids that were their age and stuff. Okay. They were created for that purpose. Uh, what age group would that be? That'd be under 10. Okay. And uh, they were created, if there's this group or this group that was created as magicians. That was their whole purpose was magicians. And some dealt with all chants. One remembered all the chants and stuff and all of the, the uh, spells and stuff like that. That's Can you do that for me? Give me chants and spells? Mm, can you remember right that? No, no, not right yeah. now, but can you? Yeah, I can do. Huh? I can do that. I can put them down on paper. Okay. Tell you. Have you put them on paper yet? No. <laughs> not really, I don't. I didn't that. And then I didn't make charts. Wait, 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 we haven't finished these groups here. Okay. These are, this is a magician. Uh, we had an interruption and had to cut the tape because the battery ran out. So we will continue uh, with the interview at this time. Come on around, Paul. Uh, we were. Well, that's just standing we up. were here before, I believe. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was standing up. You were standing up, right? Yeah. And I think I was explaining, or I was mentioning that we hadn't covered these two interviews here. I mean, these two groups. Yeah. And now, when on the break, when we were char recharging the battery, you came up with some more papers. So we'll yeah, I found the charts that go with this. Found the charts that go with this, right. Yeah. Further detail is. So, do you want to explain these then, and then go into those charts? Okay, uh, this, this group here, which has Damien, Ananiah, Druid, Case, David, and Peter, they all dealt with, uh, you're in charge of the, doing the chants and doing animal sacrifices. So, that's what their whole purpose was for, was to deal with animal sacrifices from 80 to 84. They were out and they were in charge of doing the chants, so they remember all the chants that they did. And, uh, this last group was the one that handled eating flesh and drinking blood, human blood and st stuff through the same time period as from 88 to 84 and stuff. And that was their whole thing was doing that, plus they also were the highest level of the uh, uh, satanic altars, so they were the oldest ones. You want to go back since you found your notes yeah. and go through each of these other groups then? Uh, well, like I said, Alex, this one represents babies that were killed or wish they were the babies that were killed. And that went from 1970 to 1984. Uh, that's when they were all created. It was in that 14-year time span. This group here was the ones that were forced to have sex with children that were under six years old because they were themselves uh, under six. These are baby altars. These are... Uh, under six. The next group was all under ten, and uh, they were forced to hurt other kids to gain higher levels in the coven. And uh, this group here was all the, like I believe I said before, they were the ones that were into witchcraft and uh, doing the chants and doing the black magic and stuff. And they were like ten to fourteen. You said these did the chants also on the human side. Yeah, and they the did the chants. Cycle. They did the. They did all they did was black magic. They this group were magicians. here. They were magicians and this group here. Witches. Yeah. This one did the animal sacrifice. Yeah, they did the animal sacrifices and the chants. Okay. Because they're separated. You mentioned that these people did chants also. They did the chants for the black for magic. The black magic. So that's all they had. So they had all the chants that were involved with the magic and Satan and stuff. So that's where that's. Okay. Now you have a chart for that. Yeah. Let's hold that up. I don't think you can see it though. These are no. notes that you made earlier. Yeah. Those are notes I made earlier and... They're in pencil also, which is a problem. What's this here? Trying to... Oh, this is what they each did. Hold them straight again. I think I can, uh... Let me turn them sideways first. Yeah. Okay, there they are. Pencil part I can't see, but the... Yeah. That I can get most well, of we'll it in. Well, we'll clarify this. Uh, these notes here are in pencil and they explain each group these, these pencil parts so I got a perfect photo on each one of them right now and I'm going across the page okay now you can turn it sideways and see if I can I, I can see the lettering see if I can focus in on it and just hold it steady yeah I got a perfect one okay I'm so glad this thing has autofocus on it. OK. 
Okay, now to go down a little bit. Okay. Okay. Move the paper so I can see. Sideways. Well, all together so I can see the chair, so I can focus it on the chair again. Yeah, just pull it down. That way I can now. Uh, okay. We still have to go back to the charts. <sighs> this can look real fun on the tape part of this thing. How's that? Huh? How's that? <laughs> All the movement. <laughs> but it'll look okay. Okay. Okay, now I'm back. Okay, now you're back. We've got this one covered. <laughs> now we need to go to... Um, now we need to go to one of Dustin's, which is down. Yeah, here's Dustin. Dustin. Dustin's here well, on the Ben Master this. chart, and here he is. This goes right in there. Well, this goes into Carl's. So. Okay, so... This one right here. Huh? That, this is the next one we should have? That should be the next one, because that goes... That tells who his people are. Okay, Alex and uh, Zach. Zach, they. <coughs> and I also have more notes on them, so I can look them up real quick and tell you what everything is. It's almost better when I had everything in my head. But uh, Zach's group was mainly made up of uh, like a computer system in my head. They were like all the personalities in them held specific things for. Uh, for containing all the information they had, hypnotic suggestions and stuff. Some of them weren't real personalities. They were just kind of hypnotic ones. That's the ones under Zach. One's under Alec. Uh, they're not personalities, they're simple, you know. They're just uh, uh, kind of a file system to hold memories of all the other alters and stuff and keep everything from being united into one personality. They, they try to keep everything from being put into one personality. Uh, Alex is the he's the controller of the of that network that <coughs> and then after him you go into uh, Sean and Ryan and Sean and Ryan's total purpose was um, Sean and Ryan on the master chart uh, yeah Sean and Ryan down here on the master chart and also up here uh, Sean had a lot of personality and stuff they were uh, due to they were a lot of them were hypnotic suggestions they were they had really no memories and stuff. They just gave names to I gave them names to simplify them and stuff. A lot of them they held like lear learning how to drive a tank or. Uh, well, did you actually know how to drive a tank? Mm hmm Who taught you that? That was part of the military training with uh, Monarch. Okay. So. We'll go into that later. Yeah, and then uh, we got Ryan and his were. He had abilities too, and they were made mostly intelligent and sabotage and learning how to spy on other people and other places and that was their whole purpose for being created and uh, <coughs> then the lost personality as I call him is Kelly uh, but Kelly's was, not on here well Kelly's down here well he's over here then you're going back to the city yeah I got the chart in the wrong place I thought it was the lost guy that I had lost one time ago I looked for the wrong name when I was trying to read it. That happens every once in a while. On this one here, I should explain. Paul Jr.'s name used to be Demaya. He changed it. He didn't like it because it was a satanic uh, name. He wanted nothing more to do with that stuff, so... Uh, I'm getting all the of the... Then we got Bradley, who's down here. What, did you have any more on Kelly? On Kelly, his personalities were just ones that were locked up all the time. Oh, they're locked up in behind doors and closets? Locked up and closets, prisons, stuff okay, like that. Okay, okay. So uh, when you were in prison, did you have Kelly's personality or were you integrated then? I had him when I first went in and stuff, so it's like he dealt with a lot of the beginning stuff, so. Okay. And then we got uh, Bradley's group here. Uh, they were all set, had set purposes and stuff. They had been... Um, had military training and stuff like that, and uh, 
Some of their names are like Sylvester, Roger, Scorpio, Magi, Dennis, and Robert. And they're... Uh, you had six personalities. Yeah. yeah, they were forced to do things with other men for the military to kind of uh, blackmail politicians and stuff to get the military whatever they wanted. And uh, then we got Carl, who's not the last one. Brian's the last one, but... Carl's here and Carl's here. Yeah. Uh, Carl, there, he, well, same one as up here, but his group, and it's very specific on everybody that was in his group and stuff, he had 21 people, three groups of seven. <clears throat> he had Simon, who was like a uh, computer sergeant at the clerk. He's like the one that ran that. And he had Logan, who was an electrician tech. Donald, who was a computer tech. Perry, who was a secretary. Wesley, who was a secretary. Uh, Edward, who was a computer specialist. And William, who was a computer uh, specialist also. And they mainly ran, you know, when we had to deal with like computers either inside of my head or outside, they're the ones that ran them and uh, even fixed my sister's computer when I first got out because she had some problem with it. And they just went in and straightened it out. It was just on punching stuff in right. And she's been through school for that and she still didn't know how and her instructor mm -hmm. didn't know how and I just went in five minutes and I had it completely mm -hmm. fixed. Impressive. And then we have Jeff who is the uh, tech secretary chief. He's like in charge or security chief, not secretary chief, security. He was in charge of security inside. He's the one that kept us all safe. He was like the very uh, This is the uh, the twenty one personalities, yeah. Yeah, and he had Jackie who was the a security Which guy. Before we sit down. Over those notes in front of the camera. Okay, good. We're still talking about uh, Carl, right? I want to sit down. Get the middle of the table. <laughs> Pull the chair inside. He's and a cross uh, personalities. Yeah. Jackie was uh, one of them under him. He was like in charge of security. He's the one that kept everything tight lipped on these so they wouldn't say nothing. Shane was a weapons sergeant. He knew all about weapons and stuff. He was the one in charge of putting them out. Dan, he's the one I used to call ninja all the time. He's the martial arts uh, mm -hmm. instructor for all the other personalities. He taught all the other ones how to fight, mm -hmm. which wasn't hard when I knew how to. You know, I, was, I was the highest degree one. And then you got Brian, who was in security, and then you got Douglas and John, who were weapons, weapons specialists. They fixed them and tore them apart and mm -hmm. tell you about an M60 machine gun and all that other stuff. Then uh, down below, you got Shanna, who was in charge of demolition. Yeah, Fox, who was an engineer, Sloan, who was a demolition expert, Henry, who was an information, information and demolition, uh, Tom, who was a pilot, Greg, who was an information sergeant, and Nick, who was an explosive expert. So that's what their total purpose was. It's like all he knows about it was in the past when, it, when I wasn't in Greg to have gotten him out. One thing he had told you about is, you know, how to make things blow up. You know, how much dynamite you'd need to blow up a bridge or a building or... You learned this all in the military. Mm. Yeah. How to okay, now, light up your Christmas tree. Did we cover Bradley's six personalities? Bradley... Here's here, yeah, Bradley here. Yeah, we, we, here. we did him just before. And how about Brent? Brent, Brent uh, he was actually not a personality for abilities. He was a personality for disabilities, mostly. Uh, he was the one that caused blindness for me. I mean, in the physical body, he would cause these things to happen. It's like, while my vision would go out on me sometimes, he'd block things out so I couldn't see memories of things. He'd actually take pictures of people would show me and show me somebody else. Like, he'd show me a picture of somebody, and he'd show me a picture of the Pope. That's what I'd see. And you're showing me a picture of uh, Ronald Reagan, he'd show me a picture of the Pope, just to confuse me. Uh, he had deafness, numbness. He gave me a temperature, he gave me weakness in the arms, chest pain, seizures, headaches, weakness in the legs, weakness all over, cramps in the legs, stomach cramps, speech slurred, and touch disability, because I used to have no feeling in my fingers. He's the one that caused that. Because every time he ever got in trouble, they used to smack his hands, or cut his hands, which I got cuts in my fingers, so he decided he didn't have no feeling in his fingers, so he just did that. Okay. <laughs> okay, how about this last chart here? This is uh, That's, this Dustin. Can we go through Dustin already? Dustin was the one that just had the. Uh, I think that's somebody else's chart. Carl's chart. 
It's Carl's chart? Yeah. Oh, Carl. Yes, sir, okay, yeah, through Carl. Yeah, I went to Carl. Okay, you already went through Carl. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is Carl here, and this is Carl. So I'm going to get all this way. Okay. That's the master chart. How about this? Can we go through this? Bradley? Yeah. We went through this earlier. Yeah, we just went through the window. So I'm going to throw this up on the camera, because I don't think we have it on the camera. Do we have this on the camera? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't so. think we did either, yeah. Here's Bradley. We went to Bradley. This is Paul, Dustin, Alex, Zach, Sean, Ryan, and then Bradley. And then Bradley breaks down into Carl and uh, Brad. Oh, wait a minute. Bradley here breaks down into, uh, into Sylvester, Roger, and you. Oh, that's your six personalities. Okay, I got it. Here's the I'm Bradley getting... Six. Hold the master chart up real quick, because I got a perfect... Okay. That's your six of, uh, six personalities of Bradley. Did you, did you explain them? On Bradley? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Alex behind his finger. That's the one I couldn't see. Alex right there? Yeah. Okay. okay, then you can move it back and I can okay, refocus. Okay, we can all the charts now. Uh, this isn't like the America's Most Wanted crew that came in. <laughs> <laughs> they had their own cameraman. But this is, gonna, this is going pretty good. <laughs> I think it's going very well. I just got to get the chair centered. Now it says here you had a total of 199 altars minus only Wesley. This is in a document that uh, yeah. he wrote up, right? Yeah. You want to explain that? Oh, uh, altogether there were 199 altars minus only Wesley. Not counting myself, for the most part, only about 30 contained a lot of memories, and only 20 were memories of abusive, outside of abusive situations. That means that. There's only 20 of them that didn't go through abuse. Uh, <clears throat> or times, outside of abuse situations, or times of being manipulated by others to do their bidding. Uh, the altars could be classified the following ways. First, many were caused by sexual abuse. These ones have the most, these ones have most of the incidents fully intact. They also have a few who are very mature and who in themselves turn from the, the abuse. Some were stuck as children, and almost none knew they were part of myself. And I do, in fact, have charts for each group of altars as they were classified by okay. myself. The Class A altars, uh, which I'm going to hold way out there so that maybe the camera can pick it up. Maybe not. I don't know. But do you want to explain that? Yeah. Uh, class A altars were ones that were uh, living day-to-day -day lives, they don't include the controller personalities, which a controller is somebody who's in control of making sure the right personality comes out at the right time for whatever activity is taking place. These personalities would like go to the store, they'd go to school, they would study German, or they'd do your normal everyday things that I could even do. Class B altars, these were altars that were mostly present while I was a child. Most of them have never even fully grown up. So many are, are most of them are still, were, were at the, before the integrated stuff, were still children. Some, uh, most have several memories. And uh, normally uh, the activities are only with a certain individual, with one person. That's it. That's their memories. With, whenever they're with one person, that was their whole responsibility was being with that person, with whatever they did. That was their... Uh, purpose. Class C altars. <clears throat> These altars are only partial personalities. They have several memories but are not uh, full. They were used for one direct purpose only. They also contain altars, uh, also contains altars that were very organized at keeping track of memories such as the computer uh, files. Uh, class D altars are those that were split off from other altars there were higher functioning altars that dealt with day-to-day -day life, but they couldn't 
handle some of the activities that even took place at them, so they split off altars of themselves. Uh, these altars are very distur have very disturbed memories. Since none of them contain full memories, some have partial memories shared by their altars. And class, well, class E altars are uh, control or lead altars who are either in control of other altars or have triggers to set off their own abilities or uh, that make no sense. Their own abilities or inabilities. Oh, inabilities. Okay. And then class F altars are altars are personally split off uh, from other altars. These hold very small, I mean, they could hold five minutes of time. And that's all that they would ever hold. Some of them were involved with Satanism. Uh, some had triggers and their sole responsibility was as messengers inwardly to make sure that others were out at the proper time. Or they were altars who became fully um, internal prior to the discovery of MPD. Some of them actually got integrated before. They <coughs> Excuse me. Now, before we go any further, <coughs> I'd like to point out that, uh, that you, Paul, have listed all your personalities by altars. Yeah. And I'd like to put these on camera. Okay, I'll... And, and so I'll you, you won't run the camera, and I'll identify each group. Okay. This is Class A, and those are all Oops. the personalities. Those are all the personalities. Right? Yeah. Let's see. Let me get this all on. Tell me when to turn the page. I'm just gonna... Okay, you can turn it. Okay, these are your Class B altars. And these are all... We're all on the charts, right? Yeah. I got them all listed. You got them? Should I have to turn the page? Hang on, I got to go back up on the other side still. <laughs> if I didn't have this mounted, I'd take it off. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can go. And these next, this next group are class C altars. Yeah, I gotta take it off. I can do this better without it on here. I mean, it doesn't take but a second to okay. put back. Be careful since this thing is uh Well, come on, focus. There it goes. Okay, go on. And the next are class D altars, all of whom are listed on the chart. You got some empty spaces, 31 through 35. Does that mean anything? No, I just didn't put anybody's name in there because there was nobody there. You just, okay. I want to move your finger down at the bottom. I'm missing Sylvester. Okay, you can go on to the next one. Uh, next is class E altars. Go on, focus a little bit better. Are you, can you read these on camera? Mm hmm I think maybe we ought to go through the charts that we had and do this, Tom, don't you? Because we you couldn't read them. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we get through with this. Yeah. E and this is F coming up. Can I go on a little bit further? Okay, there we go. I'm not doing like they do on TV where they give you two seconds to look at it. like a flyby view of it. Okay. That should be it, I think. Now let's go through the hang in there. Let's go let me go through these charts. Okay, let me get this. Oh there's this trap. What do you know? You ready? I'm gonna get this cord over here so I can uh, Some 
master chart. Okay, let me get this. Dustin's entire group. Some when you're ready. Paul Jr.'s group. Huh? I'm just looking at the different groups at it one at a time. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, next I'm going to show you uh, Bradley's group. And on the master chart, that'll be here through to Bradley. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, Okay, you can go on. What? Okay, the next I'm going to show you will be Carl's group, and this is the master chart. It'll be Dustin through to Carl and his 21 personalities. Okay. Next will be Brant's group. Be Dustin through to Brant. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, you can go on. Okay, and next will be uh, Paul Jr.'s group. Let's look at the chart here. Let's see, Paul Jr. It'll be right here. This is the satanic group. Let me zoom in on that. Get it focused. Focus. That's the master. I'm looking you're looking at the master now. You ready to go to the next? Hang on, I gotta get it. Huh? You ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay, now. Here it is with the thirty six personalities. Just like your eyeball, it needs to focus. Yeah, you tell me when to go. Okay, you can go. Okay, this is Todd's group. This is the master chart here. This is, we're going to go all through here to Todd. Put Todd in the center there. Here's Todd. It's like, where's Todd? Focus. Here's Todd. Here's Johnny. Where's Johnny? <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to touch it. Okay, there's Todd's crew. All the way down to the Henry Gall that wants to be different and not focus very good. Todd's group has uh, ten personalities, according to the master chart. Ready to go to the master chart now? Yep. And this is Mich Misha. Misha? Micah. Micah. M I C H A is it? M I C H yeah. H E. M I C H A. H A. No, it's H A yeah. Okay, Micah. Eighteen personalities. That's where. This is a master chart. Now we're going over here to Micah. Whoa, back up. Go back to the master. No, I'm talking about. I had to back up the camera. It's a little too close for me. I gotta go forward a little bit so I can read the names. Okay. And the next will be Dane's group. And on the master chart, it'll be down to here. I gotta find the paper again. Where is it? Right here. Yeah. It's the master chart. Okay, uh, now here it is. It's Dane's group. Dane has seven personalities. I can get all of them on a close-up so I can get it. I see their names real good. Dane. Okay. Okay, and next is Kristen. That's this one right here with eight personalities. Come through the chart to Kristen. That's the master. Here's the detailed chart of Kristen. Kristen's eight personalities. 
Okay. And next will be uh, Mark Anderson, which will be over here. That was created because of your experiences with Harold Anderson, right? And here, this is the master chart. Now here's the detail chart. Oh. Okay, one minute. Let me get this back up. So I can, uh, come on. Should be able to see all the names. Okay. The next is Zachary Zacharias Knight. Zacharias Knight. Zacharias Knight, and that's this group here. That's 21 personality. This is the master chart. Here's the detail chart. And the last is uh, Christian. That's this right here with 33 personnel. This is a master chart. Right Let's there. See, I gotta get it focused. Okay. And here is the detail chart. Boo, back up. <laughs> Me? No, I'm talking about talking yourself. the camera. I need to back it up a little bit because it's just a big, uh, you know, I gotta f go in and go across it. Otherwise, I'll never get them all on the same shot. Oh, come on, go on a little bit closer. Maybe it'll focus a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Back up. Okay. Ready? Yep, that's it. That's it. Okay, put the camera back on the tripod, and we'll get on with the next step. Ah. Don't turn it off, I'll leave it on. Yeah, I'm doing that. Fortunately, I've got it. I don't want to turn it off because they might think something might be said. I'm sure I picked it up, but I can't help it. Huh? I'm blowing my nose. Oh well. <laughs> you gotta blow, you gotta blow. <laughs> okay. Come on, tighten up. It doesn't spin around on me. Do we hold it? Can we hold it? Oh, I got it. You sure? It's still going. Yeah, it's just I thought it spun in and it didn't. Oh, no wonder. Forgot to put the bolt up. Want me to help you? I'll be glad to come over there if you need me. Don't make it, don't make it back to the shot. There, we got it. got it? Okay. Okay. Get away with this. I'll turn this so it doesn't allow the camera to just flop back and forth there. Almost have a little bit of excitement. It's like, I just got attacked by a vicious dog. focused on the chair again, but that's easy, because I know where it goes. Whoops. This one needs to come up just the hair. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, next thing I want to do, uh, I want to go in more into detail on these, but before we do, I want to clarify a point. Uh, when we were recharging the battery, uh, I asked you about a statement that you made earlier on tape that you'd not been interviewed by the FBI, never met anyone from the FBI, and never seen, uh, even seen an FBI agent. Yeah. Now, when I first interviewed you in prison here last fall, you said that you had uh, met a number of FBI agents, and I want to clarify that discrepancy. Can you 
explain that? Yeah, what I meant by not meeting any FBI agents, I meant involved with the Franklin, anything dealing with the Franklin case, dealing with Johnny Gosh, I'd never met anybody dealing specifically with this case. I had met FBI agents prior to being arrested and stuff with different things I was involved in and stuff, but I had never met anybody dealing with uh, Gosh or with uh, Franklin, so what not any, any related matters with uh, the Franklin case or with Johnny Gosh, so I've never met anybody with that. What you're saying is you've never had a formal interview no, I've never been with the anything. FBI. No. Since the Franklin Credit Union case broke, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's okay. What I'm saying. So I want to clarify that because you told me in the last interview that I had with you that you had met seven or eight agents, I believe. Yeah. And I want to get into that later. Okay. Now, what I want to do next is I'd like to go through. We're not through with the chart, by the way, Paul. I'd like to go through the part, the chart, starting with Mark Anderson, and explain each one of these. Why, why Mark Anderson? You, you said something earlier. Is there any further clarification of that? Because you With Mark Anderson, it was mainly dealing with... Uh, he started when I was about... I think it was before I was six. Harold was Anderson, he, you're well, talking about. He start, the personality started okay. before I was six and stuff. As just Mark. And never had a last name. And years later, he was the person I had dealt mainly with uh, Harold Anderson, and that's where he picked up the name Anderson for his last name. What is years later? About 1978, I believe. Well, how old were you then? I was about uh, probably 11, 10, 11 years old. Okay, and uh, who is Harold Anderson? He was the ex-editor uh, of the Omaha World Herald. Publisher, I think he was. Well, yeah. He was a publisher. Yeah, he was also the editor. Was he before that? Believe. Okay, before he was published, he was an editor. Yeah, and oh. I know that happened in... Just double checking. 78, yeah, because I met him in through uh, Danny Walter Carlson. And that was at some. Who's Danny Walter Carlson? <clears throat> huh? Who's Carlson? Walter Carlson. Walter? Okay, who was that? Uh, he was one of the first guys that really started abusing me on a regular basis. And he started in about 76. I met him at Hanscom Park. Uh, my family was having some kind of family reunion or something, and he was together was there, and I was kind of off to the side and he talked to me and said, you know, I might like to come over and play some of his nephews or something sometime. And, uh, so I, I agreed to and stuff, and he, sometimes he started, uh, he, at first it started off, we went over South stuff and we watched cartoons and stuff, then it started into showing regular movies, and then he started showing movies with men and women having sex, and movies of men and boys having sex and stuff, so kind of worked out. And there's other guys like a guy named uh, Ken Bruner and... Uh, Who's he? He's a guy that used to be with Carlson and stuff at parties and stuff at Carlson's house or at uh, Joe Burke's house. He was also another guy that was involved with them. And, and what, uh, what were their occupations? I have no idea what their occupations were. I never... You, know, you, I was, you don't know Carlson? I was a kid, I didn't know. Carlson's Bruners or Burke's occupations? You never did know? I never knew because I was just a kid and I never, you know, they didn't volunteer any information. You haven't learned since then, have you? Mm -mm. Okay, keep going. Uh, but they were involved, the whole group of guys who, uh, again, they were molesting other kids and they did the same thing to me. And, uh, does, that have, does that have to do with uh, Mark Anderson's personality? Those yeah, that some, had something to do with it because... Those personalities under Yeah, Mark they Anderson. a lot of the personalities were abused by those guys and stuff, and along with the other personalities that are in this general area, but uh, it was through them that I met uh, Harold Anderson at a party and stuff, and that's when I started to meet with him. That's when you got into the big time, huh? <clears throat> no, kind of, because after that I met other people. Who else did you meet through Harold Anderson and these people? Through them, I really didn't meet too many people. I met a guy named uh, uh, Robert Andreessen, who was a big guy that lived out in Ralston and uh, used to kind of be th real threatening if you told that he would hurt you or something. Who was he? Uh, who's Andreessen uh, professionally? 
professionally, I'm not sure what he was. All I know is a big guy. I never, I never got to know what anybody really did for a living. The only, I, I never even knew what Harold Anderson did, except for uh, one time I was told he ran a paper. That's all I knew is that he ran a paper. I didn't even know what paper. You subsequently learned who, who he is, right? Yeah, a lot of them I, I learned since, and a lot of them I haven't. Okay, how about Zachary Knight? That personality, how'd that develop? <laughs> Zachary Knight developed about the same time as uh, Mark. He was one of the controllers and stuff, and he developed through sexual abuse, and he decided he couldn't handle it too much, but he was also the one that dabbled into Satanism, so. Okay, who's he? Professionally. Who? Oh. <laughs> Zachary Knight. I don't even know, I mean, the last name. I've been trying to figure out where that's come from for a long time. Okay, who else did he, did he introduce you to? Uh, that's nobody. Uh, What's that chart he, you're looking at there? This is a chart of the guys who abuse me and stuff. It just has their names, uh, approximates sexual activity with each person, with, with that person, the year I met them or, you know, about that time and stuff, okay, we look from what town they're from and then involved with what group of people, like if they're involved in Ambler or Carlson or Bear or... Okay, we can go over that chart know. too then later on, huh? Yeah. Okay. And he introduced me to, through Zachary, I got involved with like Emilio and stuff and... Emilio, you want to explain who Emilio is? Emilio is the guy who uh, abducted, not, uh, abducted Johnny Gosh and kidnapped kids for a living. That's I've come to learn was his occupation, I guess. Okay, who else did you introduce you to? I don't really know. There's just a lot of people I introduced me to. You didn't know their names, in other words? Well, yeah, I know their names, but all personalities were involved with a lot of the same people, so. Well, I see. So there's overlap. But how about Christian uh, Benassi? Uh, he was the first one that was created. Okay. And, uh, how old were you when that happened? About three. He was created at first because of the sexual abuse that the guy from the, was in the Air Force was uh, letting one of his friends do. And uh, he was also created to start handling the tough things. And when he couldn't handle it, he created a new personnel, a new altar that was a controller, which was Zach. Then he created Mark. Then they got together and they created the other ones, and they got together and created all the rest of them. So. Christian and Dane. Christian's the one that was also a Christian personality that well, became a Christian before. K R I S T I and Christian, not Christian. Christian, yeah. Yeah. I was talking about Christian, yeah. Okay. So, Christian, K R I S T E N. I N. I N. <clears throat> was an outgrowth through Christian. Yeah, sure. Christian and Zach. Well, how did uh, Chris, Christian, K R I S T E N, I N, and Dane develop? Uh, they developed when some of these personalities appear started developing consciences, so they tried to push. Oh, them I see. So Christian, Benassi, Zachary Knight, and the Mark Anderson personality developed a conscience. So then you pushed them into another personality. They pushed into another personality that would. And that would be mm -hmm. Kristen, K R I S T I, yeah. and Dane, right? Ones that were more willing to do what these people wanted because they started saying that that was wrong and they didn't want anything to do with it. But this is a group up to six years of age. No, those are all of age, all ages. Well, oh, these are all ages. Okay. Yeah, those ones are all ages. So this is under the uh, these all. The, I mean, okay. there's some in there that were like 18, 19 years old. So. Uh -huh. Well, then going over to this next group, Todd and Micah. Mikey, am I? Micah. Am I C H E? Well, it's C H A. A. Okay, Micah. Micah. This is real clear on the chart. What about them? Uh, they were developed how? Well, they were developed to deal with specific persons. 
like with Alan Bear and uh, one dealt, d dealt with Larry King and okay, he's dealt with a different... Explain who Alan Bear is. Alan Bear is the ex... Uh, I guess he's the ex... Uh, heir to the Br J.L. Brandeis and Sons. He also owns a lot of realty and stuff out in all over the country and he's got some buildings out in San Francisco. Some that got damaged in the earthquake in 89. And uh, I don't really know that because I was in the house and he was talking about it at the same time. Talking about his buildings that got damaged. In 89? Yeah, the earthquake. You were in the house since 89? Well, I was, I, one of the personalities had gone back and had seen him and stuff and was at his apartment one time and he was talking to one of his um, before you went to jail? He has a female, he had a female attorney, yeah, it was three days before. Wednesday, I got arrested, actually Saturday morning at about 2.30. A couple of days before that, I told him to go F himself and, you know, because he tried to want me to get some of my young friends to go to his parties, and I told him no way to go F himself, and I left. Mm -hmm. And he told me I'd be sorry. That was the last time you saw Alan Barrett? Well, when I was there at the, at, the, at the apartment in Twin Towers, he was talking to one of his, I guess she was a, an attorney out in, I believe she was out in California, out in San Francisco, where the earthquake hit. And they were talking about a building that had been damaged by the earthquake and the elevator didn't work and the people that were complaining and stuff, which would be really neat to check out because, you know, how would I know he had a building out there and how would I know that it was damaged by the earthquake if it indeed wasn't? What kind of a building was it, do you know? I don't know. It was an apartment. Apartment? Okay. It was a building that people lived in because they were talking about some of the tenants were complaining because they... Do you remember which personality visited his house? Yeah, Mikey. Oh, Mikey did. Okay. And he's under, under Christian. A, well, no, no, Mikey isn't under Christian. He's over here. So. No, that's Micah. 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 Mikey. Oh, Mikey. He's not a controller. He's just a personality, okay. so he's in that group there. Okay, how about Mike and Todd? Uh, <clears throat> Mike and Todd stored a lot of information. I don't remember. And they just stored information about certain people that were uh, involved with specific people. I mean, they dealt with uh, all kinds of different things. Jimmy Escobeto was the one that was involved with Emilio, that he was scared to death of saying anything to anybody. Personalized under him and stuff were the ones that remembered specific details about places. Uh, Nathan Price was named after, uh, I forgot who the guy was, a guy named Jerry or something like that, Price. Uh, he dealt with that. And, uh, Eric and Benjamin Howard dealt with a minister that was a gay minister from Colorado. Uh, was also in charge of a gay church, which but where in Colorado? Near Colorado Springs or something. It was one of the MCC churches they had, most of the new churches. And then Sean and Demetri Bear were dealing with Alan Bear. That was it. Todd's personalities dealt with uh, higher class people. I think Alan Bear is in higher class, but they dealt with a little bit higher class people. You mean, you're talking about politically influential people? Yeah. But I don't know, I mean, like this Gaul, I know he was a senator or something, or congressman or something, Gaul. How do you spell it? G-A-L-L. And uh, my name Weiss, and a guy named William, which I got Prince William, that's because the guy called him, called me Prince William. Weiss called me Prince. And so he just took the guy's last name and used it too. <coughs> Okay, keep going. You want to go to the next group, which would be your satanic group? Okay, and then you got Paul Jr., who used to be called Demaya. Demaya was a demonic, it was a demonic name in the first place, and that's why he decided to change the name when he got saved. Uh -huh. And uh, personalized under him with a group that we talked about that had the 36 in it, six groups of six, is, right. which is a satanic right. number. Uh, then you got Wesley, who used to be called Confusion. He used to confuse all the information about everything, and uh, he didn't really have personalized on him. He just had confused thoughts on everything. And then there's Life, who used to be called Death. He's Life now because he was one that went from the mode where I'm going to kill myself all the time to, hey, 
It ain't so bad. I can handle this. I've been through worse. Mm -hmm. So he kind of went from death to life. And then there's Kelly who dealt with being locked up all the time, and he just kind of disappeared the last oh, four months of being in prison. Actually, the last year he disappeared. He wasn't even around after I went to the parole board, and they yanked my parole. No need for him. So we pretty well dealt with this other group, I think, in detail, yeah. right, didn't we? Uh, the Dustin group. Okay, get your chart out there that you had that shows that everybody uh, you've been involved with and the dates and the times and so forth. Okay. Uh, that's yours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's yours, this is mine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that the same thing as this, sir? Yeah, it's the same thing. You said this is oh, that's this right. This clip. Well, that's uh, America's Most Wanted. I'm going to go over that yeah. in a little while. I want, to go, I want to go through this uh, next section there. Okay, let's see. You didn't. You mentioned Larry King on the just a minute ago. You want to explain to the who Larry King is here? Larry King uh, used to be in charge of the Franklin Credit Union, I believe. I think that's what it was called. Uh, he was the uh, thief. I mean, uh, I don't know who he was. I. <laughs> Well, he was uh, charged with embezzlement and fraud, I think. Yeah, and, uh, stole thirty-eight million dollars in fifteen years. Yeah, and, and, and Paul uh, Jim Baker stole four million and gets forty-five years, which they reduced it all the way down to twelve million or something. I think, yeah. Very good. <laughs> well, okay, this is uh, these are charges and records that you get. Now, how, how do uh, let me ask this? How can I be sure that you, these are documented? dates and times and so forth. Did you have a calendar or a diary or what? I had that one diary that the, I had seven diaries. All six of them disappeared. The seventh one, a couple of months were ripped out of it. I mean, it had names. The one that had a couple, two months ripped out of it had names, phone numbers, addresses of all these guys and stuff in it. Because they had a front, front part in the thing in it. How'd you reconstruct it? I used my mind. Part of this was pretty simple because I remembered when stuff happened, so I just went off of the memories. Uh, I had a little calendar for something, but I don't know what's that. You showed me a calendar, calendar a year by year calendar about two hours ago. Yeah, a year by year calendar something that I created since I've been out to. Oh, since you've been out, you didn't have that to, time. No, that's from the internal memories and stuff. But there is something in there that was off of a regular calendar that most of it probably looked like. Jump. It went off of a real calendar that I've got downstairs. I know exactly where it's at, but I don't find it in here. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if I can find the back side of it. That's definitely not the back side, but it'll do. I'll have to do. I got the other side of it because I had to suffer on the other side of the chart, the calendar. But uh, this is one of the things I kept. I had to refocus it because I missed some of it on that side. But it's a little calendar that's about actually like this big, and I just blew it up. Enlarged it. Enlarged it so that you could see everything that's written on it. The other side had some writing on it, stuff about monarch and stuff. But that's not the other side. That's just. Who stole your somewhere. diary? When I got arrested. My mother remembers that my diaries were all sitting on my dresser. Okay. She had seen them, you know, all the books and stuff I had on my dresser. And when the police arrested me the night I got arrested, they all disappeared. And you they took a bunch of diary. stuff. They took a bunch of stuff. They took some videotapes, which I they had fun watching John Jake's the power team. And what was on the videotapes? Just ministers and stuff like that. You were on sex acts? No. Did you have any porno films there? Uh-uh. I, did. I didn't have any pornography at all. I never... I've never gotten into pornography, and I never... These other people were into it. pornography, though. You told me before. Well, yeah, they were into it, but I didn't get into it. Okay, what did, so the police have your diaries? Well, I'd probably burn them by now. But well, did you ask for them back? They said they didn't have them. They gave one diary back, and that's when they were two months out of it. And that's because that diary they gave, my grandmother gave to them, so they knew that somebody in our family knew that they had them. The other ones, when I got arrested, the night I got arrested, they took the videotapes, they took pictures, like with what you've seen already. That's the picture they took. You know, some of them were like from 1980, when I was 13 years old. Some of them were before that. Which picture? No. All of my photographs that... Oh, there's pictures? The that, yeah, okay. 
But uh, all those photographs, oh, your friend, were, photographs yeah, of your friends. Photographs of my friends when I was growing up and stuff. They and took the those? They took all of them. Uh, they took the videotapes, which didn't have anything on them, anything bad stuff. They took the diaries, which they never said they took them. They took a antique video, an antique movie camera that didn't even work, as far as I know, because we just got it the day before that, so nobody knew if it worked or not. An antique projector, an antique screen, and all this stuff nobody knows if it worked or not because it never got a chance to yeah. be messed with. And they took an old, it was like an old little tiny package like that that didn't have film in it. They asked me what they were going to find in the film. I said, well, probably nothing. There's nuts and bolts in the casing because I took the film out. I figured it's been sitting there for over 20 years. It, the film ain't no good. Mm -hmm. You know, because especially if it's been exposed to light several times. And right. So they took all that. They gave all of it back except for the batteries. And then, and then they, did you say they denied that they ever had the diary? Yeah. They denied they ever had the diaries. The only one they gave back was the one my grandmother gave to them. That's because they knew. What did you have in the there. diaries? I had written down. There it goes. It's on. It's on. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're back. I uh, handled my phone call. Nothing serious. It's a flood in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, and this is a list uh, that you compiled from your various records in your diary, and that in me from memory that were in your yeah, records and diary. And the diary. police took your diary, never took returned them. Claim they don't have it. Yeah, it's now, all six of them. on this list, uh, this is the what? What's that first column? That's uh, the number of times that I was with that person sexually. The number of times that he's with this, each of these people sexually. These some of them I didn't write because it's so many times. Yeah, just two. I, mean, I can tell. Well, because I recognize his first names. Second column, the name of the individual. Third column is the year. Fourth column is the town. And fifth column is identifying the group that each of them was involved with. So why don't you just go right down the list? Okay. Uh, just start right over here. Just go right across and say which one of those people is. Okay. Uh, Walter Carlson is one of the first guys who sexually abused me. How old were you? I was oh, probably about eight, nine. Okay, and who is he? All I know is he was the first guy who started sexually abusing me. Okay. He got me involved with some other guys. I went on from about 76 till 1983. He was from Omaha. Uh, he was involved with this his own. Uh, the second guy is on the list is Peter Citron. You don't have any numbers there. Why? Because these. Well, are those are because there's so many times that I don't. Okay. I, don't, I can't put it down. Peter Citron. Peter Citron. I met him in 1979. I was at a uh, penny park with some of my friends, and we. Mark says with my family and stuff, and he was with some of my friends, who introduced me to him, and later on we went to some movies, and then he began having sexual activity with me. How old were you? Uh, I was. Uh, probably 12, 11, 12, right. And he's an adult, of course. Yeah. He's yeah. with the Omar World Herald? Yeah, he was with them. He was on TV as a critic. He did food critics. He did movie critics. He did just about everything. Okay. He was a critic. And uh, I knew him from Omaha, and then he moved to, he went to San Francisco for about three years, from about 81 to about 84. And I used to take trips out there once in a while. I met him on my own, and I also seen a party with Alan Bear. Now, the first, third person is a guy named Father Stan, or O'Malley. I'm not, I don't know what his name is for sure. All I know is it's something like Malley or O'Malley. And he's from Omaha, and I met him in 1976, before I met the priest, or before I met Walter Carlson. And it kind of went on once in a while. How old were you? Days. I was uh, eight. And what are those asterisks next to those three names for? Uh, that they were some of the main ones. Okay. I don't really know what the asterisk is. I forgot. You don't have any numbers as to the number of times there. So, so there were so many. Guys yeah. That in that column, so there were so many you couldn't count. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. The next person is Alan Bear, and that met him in 1979. It was August fourth or fifth, because it was the first weekend right after my birthday. Cause my birthday's on August third. It was right after that. And I would have been turning 12 years old that year, so it was right after I turned 12 years old that I met him. 
And I'd met him before at a couple of parties with some guy named John Phillips, who was also on this list further down, in fact, in the next page, in fact. I was with him two times, but uh, I think it was with him anyway. But uh, anyway, this guy took me to a couple of parties and stuff where he introduced me to this guy, and, but at the time he never had anything to do with me until I was down on the run with my friend's Mike and went him that way. Uh, the next column is from town. I got that he's, his address is 6724 um, Davenport. Uh, he had several phone numbers I remember. It was like 341-4777 and five, uh, I can't read it on here, 556-7898. Five, five, I think that's his home number that I remember calling several times. And, uh, and then that is 596, I can't read it. I don't think it's 596, I don't think that's normal number. 556 is it. And the uh, next guy is Robert Andreessen. The only reason I don't have numbers next to Robert Andreessen is because it you happened don't have numbers three times. I don't have numbers by it, but it only happened three times with him. He was from Main Street in Ralston. That's where he lived at. And that went on a couple of times from about 77 to, uh, well, what was it, 77? up to 83 or 84, I'm not sure. So I got away with, uh, away from uh, Carlson's group. Uh, the next guy I got on here, his name is uh, Shoner John Dell. It's actually Barks Dell was his name. He was, did something out of Boys Town. Met him in about 80, and he was involved with Alan Bear and Larry King and that whole group. Al Alan Bear is the heir to the Brandeis yeah, fortune. Yeah, we've already explained that. How many times on him? Uh, first call. About 10 to 20 times. Okay. He was also the one that took me to parties and stuff. He was a black guy. Uh, hang around with Larry King a lot. This guy's a guy named uh, Dwayne or Dave, and I was with him about 5 to 10 times. From about the same period, 80 to 85. He, I'm not sure about his name at all, but I know he operated a pool out at Boys Town. He was one of the pool operators. He pool? cleaned it. Oh, cleaned it, okay. And uh, was involved with the parties with Alan Barron and stuff. On the next guy, five to ten times, which actually should be updated to fifty to a hundred times, although he won't ever admit it. But I met this guy in prison, even seen him in there. Oh, he was in prison just last. Yeah. Really? He was coming up stuff, and he recognized me. And the funny thing was, is I, I always thought, well, how did he recognize me and know all about me and stuff? And come up and start talking about the Franklin case stuff. And, you know, if all of a sudden, me and I didn't have nothing to do with him, and he wouldn't admit. Well, I don't remember you, as like he kept saying, but um, it was Chuck Miller, and I knew him from about 81 till 83, and then I got away from him. And Is that the guy in prison? Yeah, he, was a, he lived on 30th in California in Omaha, and he was kind of involved by himself. He was kind of in a group all by himself. He didn't have a big group. I met him down on downtown area and stuff, and some of his other kids that he was messing around with. Did these guys pay you to do this? Uh... <clears throat> Bayer did, and the people at his parties usually paid, like uh, uh, Barksdale and David stuff usually paid me, and Chuck Miller, he took me places. Uh, he used to take a lot of trips, and that's easy to check on. He used to take a lot of kids out of the country and I mean, down to uh, some of different places that he took us to. Okay. Keep going. What did they pay you? Huh? What did they pay, they pay you? It depended. I'm embarrassed. Sometimes I'd get drugs. Sometimes I'd get money. I'd get anywhere from twenty to several thousand dollars for depending on what I had to do and how long I had to be there or whatever. It's like I went to some parties. Some got paid five thousand dollars just for going to it. You Letting did. People do whatever they wanted to. Where would that be? Well, when we took trips to California or took trips out of state. Even some trips that we took to other towns, like Des Moines and stuff, we get a you know, thousand dollars or something. It was nothing. Five thousand on some occasions. Yeah, five thousand on some occasions. Mm -hmm. Like out in uh, California, we went out there. We went out there. We had to go on to uh, Sunset Boulevard, which mm -hmm. is near Beverly Hills. Which you got Beverly Hills is where the ladies hang out on right. Beverly Hills Boulevard, and then you got Sunset. What is it? Sunset Strip, or is it? Santa Monica. Yeah, Santa Monica Boulevard. 
Why was I thinking Sunset Strip? Santa well, Monica Sunset, Boulevard. You got Sunset Boulevard and then Santa Monica Boulevard. Santa Monica Boulevard is where the teenage male prostitutes hang out at. Right. And that's where they used to send us and we'd get kids for parties and stuff there. We'd take them back to the uh, Beverly Hills Wilshire Hotel or to uh, the other one that's right there too that they have another hotel that's there. Bel Air? Yeah. Bel Air Country Club. Bel, Bel Air Hotel, Beverly Hills. And then there's, I remember one because when you walk in the door there's like a, it's like you look through it on one side and you got something on the other side. It's like a big glass thing that's right on the thing and you look yeah. through it and it kind of makes everybody else distort on the other side. Yeah. We used to have fun with that one. And, uh, when we go in there and stuff, sometimes the uh, hotel manager of some of the restaurants, or the, not restaurants, but the hotels would make you kind of, when we went in there and stuff, they made sure that we were dressed up nice. Yeah. And we were always there with our uncle or with our parents on vacation. We were, you know, especially at the Beverly Wilshire, I mean, the, the Regency. Yeah. You had to make sure that you were there on, you know, because it's like they were high-class, high-class, they had a restaurant there, and, but they, it was a high-class hotel, and they made sure that you, most of them were like that, they made sure that you were, you know, and they knew what was going on. I mean, sure they did. when you're there with Larry King, and he has a two-floor plaza, and he's got 90 kids going into his parties and stuff, and 20 adults, and... You know, Would it be that many? Like, 90 kids and 20 well, adults? Well, probably about 20 adult, 20 kids and 10 adults, or sometimes it'd be 30 or 40 adults and 40 or 50 kids. And so, some of the places we went, they did that. I mean, they male and female kids, or they had males and females. Yeah, some black, some white. They sent me out on the uh, Santa Monica Boulevard a lot of times, to, you know, to tell people, you know, there's a party there and stuff, and you show up, you'll get. You know, five hundred dollars just for showing up, which is more than they make out there on the streets anyway. Yeah. It's usually they make ten, fifteen, twenty bucks, fifty bucks. Anyway. Does anybody worry about age? <clears throat> At that time, no. That was in the early '80s when that first started. You know, because no, before yeah. AIDS yeah. came out, with, you know, it's like they'd make five hundred bucks, and then that was a lot of money for that kind of business. But keep going down the list. Uh, the next one is Rusty Nelson. He was a photographer. There's actually two Rusty Nelsons. I got another Nelson down here below, but I'm how many uh, times for Rusty? First call. Uh, five to ten times. I was from eighty-one days to six years a photographer. Uh, his address is fifty thirty-five Bedford Ave. Phone number is five five six two or six two three nine. And he was from Baron King. And his wife is named uh, let's see Rusty and Dolores. Search the D. Is, is they used to be foster parents, which kind of fits right in with everything that they were doing. And uh, they, uh, he was, he did photography for L, for Larry King. He stayed there for a while and stuff. And when they were foster parents, the, the ironic thing was they weren't even married yet. They got married after they had the foster kids and everything. And yet they were still allowed to be foster parents. And. Uh, Okay, so the next person is uh, William Thiessen, and it is the guy who owned the pizza place, and I had debate in my own head and stuff, and I wasn't 1,000% sure if it was or not, but now I am. How many times? Uh, 10 to 20. In Omaha? Was From 79 to 85, yeah. In Omaha? In Omaha. Mm -hmm. And he was involved with Citron and Anderson and that group with Bear and stuff. Next guy I got on here should be actually 200 to 300 times that I've, I've been with him, but I took, I put on here and stuff 20 to 30, but that was how many trips I took out to New York and Boston, which was where he was from, was David Thorstad. And you're here from 80, 80, or 78 to 86, and that was New York and Boston, and I was involved with NAMBLA. He was NAMBLA? Yeah, he was the founder of NAMBLA. Oh, yeah. yeah. David Thorstad? Yeah. David, how uh, David... I know his middle name, but I don't know. Tell someone right now. I don't remember it. Uh, how, did, how did Thorstadt tie into these other people? He got tied in with uh, Carlson because he was associated with some people that Carlson knew and stuff. Carlson, some of Carlson's group was getting involved with NAMBLA because of what they did and what Carlson and them were doing. They agreed with this, so they had contacts with them and stuff. And David Thorstadt came in and talked to him and stuff. And, um, took he a came in and talked to him on a lecture or just talked to him? He talked to them socially. 
Uh -huh. You know, lecture, talk to them socially and stuff. And he came in and stuff, and I was at the party that he was at and stuff, and a couple other, he had some kid that he brought with him, and uh, he took a liking to me and this other kid that was there at the parties and stuff that Carlson had and stuff, and he told him that, you know, he talked to us and stuff, and he decided that he wanted us to come out to his place and stuff once in a while. Where did he live? Out in uh, New York or Boston. I'm not sure if he lived in New York or Boston. I know he, every time I went there, we went to either, either place. He had two places that he stayed at. What did he do for a living? <clears throat> he was a freelance photographer or journalist or something like that. I know he took a lot of pictures. And I met him before Nambla ever formed. He was part of the Boise Committee, which was the Boston Boise Committee. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It was before, it was the group that Namla came out of. I mean, I was involved with that before that and stuff. They got me in touch with a bunch of people all over the country. I mean, that's how I got involved with all these different guys. They uh, provide the names to the kids. They would never provide kids' names to the adults until they got really into it so much, in fact, that, you know, it's like David Thurston and stuff. They weren't dummies. I mean, it's like the only way they'd start providing names of kids to other men and stuff is if they knew that this guy was having sexual relations with children and stuff on a regular basis and was very active in it. Otherwise, they wouldn't because they were afraid that it might be an undercover yeah. thing. They don't want anybody to know that they actually do that kind of service for people. What's, you want to explain what NAMBLA is? North American Man Boy Love Association. And you know anything about the organization? <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, the organization is, they try and uh, make a, look like they're doing things for kids' rights and stuff, children's rights and stuff to make it. Uh, but what they're actually trying to do is destroy laws that prohibit men and children from having sexual relations with each other. That's their main and only purpose, really. They try and say, well, they're against all these things, and they, you know, they got these things that state their, all their causes. That they have a magazine out that's called The Bulletin. They send it out every month, I guess. I, have, I don't receive it, so I think it's still being put out by them. And they kind of promote things that try and make it easier, or not really easier, but try and pervert the rest of the world by saying, well, there's nothing wrong with sex between men and boys, or men and, men and children, or women and children and stuff, and it's just... Women in there, too? Yeah, they got some women involved with this. Yeah. Were you a member or anything? I was, I don't know if you could call me a member. I was a kid when I was growing up through it, but I was involved with them to the point where I'd rally and I'd march with them and stuff like that when I was like 13, 14 years old, not realizing myself what this was actually doing. Where did you march with them? Uh, we went to, it was an anti-nuclear demonstration in, Mar in Washington, D.C. Uh, Who's paying your expenses? They, I don't know. Just hand you, would they just hand you a ticket and say, here it is? Or? Well, no, they wouldn't hand me a ticket. They'd come and they'd pick me up. They'd have somebody pick me up every time. They would not never send me alone. No, <laughs> they didn't do it alone. I mean, I had to have somebody with me on that. Because you were a young boy, huh? Well, not because I was young. I mean, yeah, that's the thing about it. I had to have somebody with me, and yet I should have all rights to do whatever I want anytime I want to, but they just wanted me for the sex. They didn't want to let me run around on my own. I had to be protected still. Yeah. But they didn't realize it protected from them. <laughs> you know, uh, I had a whole list of everything I did with them. In fact, I had a one marked name on it. We can cover that later. I'll make a note. Yeah, but uh, they had an anti-nuclear demonstration I was at. They started in December of 1978. Uh, that's where they had their meeting at. Yeah, we had to... Uh that was the conclusion of take one. We're on take two, beginning of take two. We had to change locations uh, because of a uh, conflict of schedule and other uh, meetings that were scheduled at the other location. Anyway, Paul, come on back over here. Let's continue with, uh, with your list here, Paul. Okay. I was at David Thurston. I was talking about some of the dates that uh, uh, 
Yeah, we got a better location now. <laughs> we got the ocean. <laughs> the bathroom. Water pipes, yeah. And the bathroom is right there. And upstairs. Oh, I'll go in the way. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I saw my David Thorstad and uh, it's like it was December 2nd, 1978 that uh, they had a meeting out. Who's they? Continue with that. Oh, once you, uh, you're, oh you're going to talk about NAMLA? Okay, we're talking well, about NAMLA. I was NAMLA. talking about David Thorstad. And how right, right, okay. I was on uh, how I met him. And you're looking at your calendar there. And I have it's kind of marked. It's kind of weird how I mark things. I don't put anything except for that. Will that take it there? Yeah. I have to get a close up on the header. It's <clears throat> like uh, I don't know how I even remember the way I get the marking thing. They just got Nambla right in there. That's when they formed Nambla when they actually formed it. What's the date on that again? December second, nineteen seventy-eight. Were you there? Yeah. When they in formed the Boston Church. Huh? In the Boston Church, yeah. Remember the name of the church? Uh, I forgot the name of it somewhere. But I have to it right Boston Community Church or something like that. Who was there when they formed it? David Thorstad, uh, a couple of the guys that I, they, they became the stirring members later on and stuff. I'm not exactly sure who was all there. I know David Thorstad was the main one there. Uh, I believe uh, Andretti was there. Andrea, or I think it's Andrea. He was a kind of a kid at the time, so Bill Andrea. Um, and several other guys that were there also. I'm not sure exactly. How many people were there? Probably um, one to two dozen. Where were they from? Mainly from Boston. They used to be called the Boston Boise Committee, and then they changed them to become Boston what committee? Boise. Boise, okay. B-O-I-S-E. Okay. 